Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Cooking with John. Because it is our third anniversary today, three is, well, kind of, well, it's not today, it's the weekend after that, it was technically on Friday, it was, um, the, uh, the 27th, yes, May 27th, that was our third anniversary, third anniversary since our first ever video. And as is sort of traditional when we get to that little milestone, I make a cooking video every year. Now, quite a lot of you have actually joined since the last one of these. So, um, couple of things. Um, one, yeah, I am an egg box. I don't really draw attention to the fact, but this is the body I was born into and I'm not ashamed of it. So, yeah, this is me. Second, this video is not sponsored by Marks and Spencers. It should be. Marks and Spencers should really be giving me money for this, but no, I just like Marks and Spencers. And you may recall, in previous years, what we've done is we've always baked a delicious dessert. For some description, we made like a cake the first year and a, um, a baked Alaska the second year. But no, this year we've decided to step it up a notch. Instead, we are going to be making a complete full three course meal and then I'm going to be handing it over to Claire to evaluate to figure out whether it's actually any good. So these are just some of the ingredients we're going to be using across these three courses and I'm going to try and like time it properly so like you know I start cooking the first bit of the next course before the first course is done and da, 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 to try and make it all actually come out reasonably efficiently. So let's see how this goes shall we? So the fun thing I've come up with for the three year anniversary is though this is a three course meal each course is going to be from a different country. Because Claire is French, I am English, and most of you lot, according to my YouTube analytics, are American. So we are going to do a different course for each country. And the starter, as you may have guessed from the fact there is just an onion sitting on a chopping board there, is going to be the French one. We're going to be making French onion soup. Now the recipe I've got is for six people and called for three onions. It's only two people here because I'm just feeding me and Claire. Sorry, I'm not feeding all 191,000 of you lot. So uh, yes, instead I'm just going to use one onion, which will therefore hopefully be enough. And I'm supposed to cut this into thin strips, which I'm going to be honest, I'm immediately slightly lost. Like if it had just been diced, that would have been fine. But how do you cut a spherical thing into thin strips? You see, I'm trying to follow the instructions as closely as I can. And it does clearly say thin strips, but when you've sliced an onion, it's got like rings on it. So are you saying like, should I just be doing this? Is is that a thin strip if I just take that bit off? Because that doesn't feel that thin, but I don't see how you cut that. But if I like just kind of put it down as I would think, and then just kind of like slice it, well either way, if I slice it this way, it all just, I guess, uh, maybe this works. I was kind of originally doing it like the other way, like this, but then I just ended up accidentally dicing it. And it doesn't say diced, it says sliced. Right, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna do it this way for this one and see if that gets me. Still feels more or less diced. Screw it all, I'm just gonna dice it more. If I can't make them slices, I can at least make them thin. So next up, we're supposed to melt some butter on our hob. That's fine, this one will do. There we are, that's, that's fire. That's how you make fire in this day and age. Shove that there. Now the butter's supposed to be 40 grams, but I, I'm making it for a third as many people, so I need to divide 40 by three. 40 doesn't go by three, so 13 grams will have to do. Get, 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 get the bloody, the, no, it's, it's already melting. You're not supposed to melt it, you're supposed to melt after you go in the bloody thing. That's a close up of butter melting right there. So once that's properly good and melted, which this kind of close to is, turn it down to a low temperature. Low temperature, but still, still on. All right, good, definitely still on, yeah. That was possibly too high a temperature, hang on. And then add in some onions. If like more than 80% of your onions actually made it into the pan, you're doing great. Now this process is apparently called sauteing. And we're gonna do this now for like well, 15 to 30 minutes it says, or until the onions start to brown. But I feel like the onions are gonna start browning way earlier than that, so we'll just wait until they start to brown. This is like the lowest temperature I could, maybe it was too high to start off with. I may have slightly started off a bit too high on the temperature. 
If you're curious about the butter, by the way, it didn't say whether I was supposed to use salted or unsalted butter, which was a deeply unwelcome choice when I got to it in the supermarket. So what I did was I went for... Camera zoom. There you are, the camera's focusing. I went for slightly salted butter. So presumably this kind of is able to pull double duties whether you need salted or unsalted butter, because it's a bit of both. Meanwhile, there's distinct signs of browning going on down here. This is all going well. It's actually far earlier than they were saying. Like, it's been like five minutes and it's already browning, which makes me think that I've gone too hot. But I can't, I can't go any lower than this. It's already set to the lowest possible level. Well, that's got to be brown right there. So the recipe now calls for two tablespoons of cold water. So, a tablespoon. And the water filter can provide some cold water. So, what? Oh, ah, 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 ah! That was more violent than I was expecting. Also, I don't know whether I need, well, I'm doing it for a third as, ah, screw it, we'll just put in, like a small one. This is like a teaspoon. Tea, that was not a teaspoon. That's fine, it'll be, it'll, it'll be fine. Okay, this is now simmering a bit or something. Hang on, let's, let's zoom right into the simmering. There we go, Claire's cam- I like Claire's camera. Claire's camera's good. That- there's the simmering. You've got a close-up of that now. So that is now gonna simmer. And I probably need to like cover that and then like let it simmer for 15 minutes. Hang on. Uh, uh, hang on, hang on. I've got- got a cover over here somewhere. Here we go. <laughs> Covered. Now you might be thinking, stupid John, now he just has to wait 15 minutes for that to be done. No I don't, I've actually got a plan. While that's now just simmering for 15 minutes, I can start the preparations for the main course. Ah, you see, there's thought put into this. So the main course is going to be the British bit of the meal. Um, there's a traditional British dish called Toad in the Hole, which is like, uh, it's a sausage, pastry, bake type thing. But I wanted to make it even more English than it already was. I thought, well, what else is English? Yorkshire puddings. So I'm going to make Yorkshire pudding Toad in the Hole, because someone actually made a recipe for that. It sounds delicious, because I love Yorkshire puddings, and I love sausage and Toad in the Hole. So we could actually kind of blend the two together. And I've got a recipe for that, and I'm going to share it with you right now. You see, this is proper, this is a proper cooking show. Right, here. oh, so, um, I just kicked the tripod. Other than that, this is a proper cooking show. The first thing we need to do is sieve in 110 grams of flour. I've got 110 grams of flour here. I've just weighed it and everything. So I'm just gonna put that in there, and that's fine. Together with a pinch of salt. And pinch. Hang on, let's just get a pinch of the pinch is a pinch. That's too much. I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, put some I put some of that in the sink. There's how much actually made it in? Bollocks. I don't know how much actually just. Okay, that's fine. That's that's Plenty. Probably too much. Uh, doesn't matter now. It's going to be quite difficult to separate salt and flour. So this goes in here. Um, this is going to make 16 little, like, Yorkshire pudding sausage things. Um, I'm not sure how big they're going to be. So that's, yeah, hopefully not a problem. Next, I've got to make, like, okay, let's just get the to... Do I just undo all the good of sieving it by doing that? I don't know. There's got to be a well. There's got to be a well in the middle for the egg to go in, because there's, there's eggs. There's gonna be eggs in this. So that's a well in the middle of that. And now what we do is we put in two whole eggs. You just stay there for a second. All right, well, I just deal with your brother. Don't, don't look, don't look egg number two. It's all fine. Uh, right, that goes in there. This is two whole eggs. I just checked with Claire. That does mean both the white and the yolk, not like whole as in like whole milk. There's not like full fat versus skimmed eggs, which was what I was originally thinking. Apparently that doesn't exist. And in goes egg number two. All right, oh. The well was not deep enough. Now here's the bit with the whisking. I've actually got a proper sized whisk this year. So now I just need to whisk, which is my understanding just means get a, I need to get the flour into the middle bit. So that's fine. That just means rotate while holding a whisk. That's what whisking means. So that's, that's fine. I've just got to get all of this in here and it's gonna form a lump, apparently. I hope that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, you see, it's mixing together because I'm using a whisk to whisk it. Next up, I need to add in 300 milliliters of milk. This here is, camera, camera, focus, focus, there you are. This is 568 milliliters of milk. So I need to add in, hang on, 52.8% of this milk. 
That's all I need to do. I just need to add in 52.8% of this milk. So, let's just put in a bit. That's about, about 50. Wait, hang on. Oh, because it's not. Oh, it's not even. Because there's more. Okay, there's going to be more volumetrically in this bit than there was in the. So, that's going to be more like this. And I probably should have used the measuring cylinder for this. Um, that. That. That's. About 52.8% right there. There we are. That's turning into a kind of slurry. Nice and quick, actually. That's all working pretty darn well. And then finally, it's calling for 10 grams of butter. Now, I just need to, I don't actually, um, I can't melt the butter on the hob because that's kind of taken at the minute. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly pop that in the microwave which I'm hoping is an acceptable way to melt butter. Okay, that there's 10 grams of butter melted in a, in a microwave. So that can just go in. All of it, please, all of it, all of it. There we go, that's, that's butter. And now, that just needs to, I've got a towel now, hang on. That goes over there. Close the microwave, don't forget to do that. And then this goes into here. And that is actually the final stage, once we've mixed all this together and we're satisfied it's all right properly into each other and stuff. Once that's done, we've actually got ourselves Yorkshire pudding mix. Made fresh by hand. Lovely. And would you believe, just bloody coincidentally, exactly as I finished doing this, it is now 15 minutes after I put those flipping, um... The onions, that's the word I'm looking for, the onions into the thing. And that 15 minutes was when they were supposed to come off the thing. So actually, this has filled the gap beautifully. This is all going far, far better than I think I or any of you expected. Not least as this mixture now has to just be set aside for one hour to stand, whatever that does, I don't know. So that goes like over um, here. It's just gone over there. You can't see it anymore, but it's over there. This is going on. This is all looking good. Put that down over there. Zoom in again. Use the zoom technology. And that is now actually, that is smelling pretty damn nice. I cannot deny. So the next step for the, um, the onions, interestingly, is about seven grams of flour or like 20, as the recipe says, but dividing by three, like seven, is as close as we're going to get. So um, I'm adding it with a mug because um, I'm kind of running a bit low on bowls already and I'm gonna have to like you know serve this in bowls at some point. Let's get a thing that's a flipping stir up, stirry thing. Spatula, that's the one. So now this thing, the um the flour needs to be oh maybe should have added more water. That's distinctly looking like it's kinda hang on, zoom in, zoom into the thing. Um, this is distinctly looking like it's all kind of just stuck to the bottom of the pan here, but, eh, okay, never mind, it's all gonna be fine. So while this business is going on, I can move on to preparing the next step, and that's gonna involve stock. Now, in order to make stock most easily, you're gonna need one of these. Um, Americans, this might be new to you. It's called a kettle. I've been to America many times and there seem to be very, very few of them around. They make hot water. They're really, really useful. You should try them. So for my purposes, I want chicken stock. I think that's what chicken, hang on. Yeah, chicken stock, just have to check that there. So, half a litre of that'll do. I've got a measuring thing here. Half a litre is up to this sort of a level. Fine, there's the stock cube in there. And now just give that a bit of a stab, I guess. Just stab it a bit. And we will have delicious chicken stock soon. So now we add in a whole bunch of stuff. Stuff that we add in. Number one, half a litre of this here chicken stock. Oh, that's lovely. That sizzles for a second and then doesn't anymore. I think we might need slightly more heat than what we've got at the minute. There we are, a little bit more heat just to get it simmering again very, very soon. Thing number two, we're gonna be needing wine, white wine. I've gone for this wine. This is wine, because you can see, kind of, if you look through it, you can kind of see through it. So this is white wine, which is what the recipe calls for. It's got a pheasant on the front, like pheasants. It's probably good. Hang on, let's see if it's good. Yeah, it's all right. I'm gonna need 33 milliliters. This is 25, uh, let's focus, focus. 25 cent, the camera's not doing well with this. It's 25 centiliters, that's presumably just linguistically, that's 20, that's 250 milliliters. 
So 33 over 250 would be one one eighth. I need to put one eighth of this in here. All right, and yeah, it's probably too much. All right, it's slightly more alcoholic than originally anticipated. Next, we need like some salt, like half a teaspoon of salt. That's half a teaspoon-ish. This is the good salt, by the way. This is actually a bit, bit extra salt doesn't hurt. Not least, is it also cause for pepper? I forgot to buy that. So we don't have pepper, which is what the recipe calls for. The recipe even does say adjust seasoning as necessary. So I've got an idea. Claire's French. So in place of black pepper, I'm just going to add in garlic. Now this beautiful soup now just simmers at a very low heat. I'm just going to turn this down a little bit more. Let's just turn that right down. There you go. See the effect there. That's now just going to simmer gently for 20 minutes. Now while that's simmering, I prepare the pièce de résistance to go with it. So what I went and did was I just went and bought a nice, really lovely, crispy baguette from, well, you know, Marks and Spencers, obviously. Yeah, I'm not making my own bread here. But I want some nice, crispy bread to be on top, so I'm going to kind of cut this at a nice, long, low angle. So there's going to be a healthy, big chunk of slicey bread that's going to be on top uh, the soup. Apparently, this is like how you're supposed to like present it when it's with soup. Yeah, you see, yeah, it's like in a bread basket at a restaurant here. Fancy. Now these need to be toasted so they don't break apart when they actually go into like the soup. So to do that, I'm going to use a toaster. Not exactly the most original thing in the world, but it should work. You know, one thing did actually just occur, which is this recipe. This whole you know, fry some onions, then add lots of stock and a bit of wine and whatever, and then like simmer slowly. This is the exact recipe for risotto, but without rice. So does that mean basically risotto is just rice soup? I feel like I've just kind of stumbled across some sort of horrific secret identity in the food world here. So, the soup is almost done. The toasty bread is nicely there, yeah, focus on that. That is nicely toasted. That's just gonna go over here in a bowl for a minute. And the other thing I've prepared is there's this cheese here. This cheese, which is good, good, I don't, it's cheese, all right? So it's gr Gruyere. Gruyere? And that kind of word feels like I've said it before, or at least heard it said on MasterChef before. Maybe this is Gruyere. If this is Gruyere, this is Gruyere. Um, and I've grated some of that too, because that's gonna go on top of the bread and be kind of like melted into it. Now, the other thing we need to do right now is if we just kind of pan out a little bit, the oven, also needs to be turned on now in preparation for the mains because that's got to be warmed up so we can get on the main pretty much as soon as the um as soon as the starter has been eaten ah you see this is all coming together beautifully all right this here is as close to done as we're gonna get so let's just turn that off we're gonna call that done so we've got the bowl here all we need to do now is pour the soup at least half the soup, I get half of it too. This is Claire's portion that I'm kind of demonstrating here. We pour the soup onto the bread, okay? There we go. Soup go onto... I made nowhere near enough soup. Okay, it's gonna be a very small, it's fine. This is all gonna be fine. There we go. I've half and halved it. So now it, it fit. I could've could gone for a smaller bowl as well. That probably would've been better. Now. The, the pièce de résistance over here. So what we've got is we've got lots of cheese, the possibly Gruyere, I don't know. So that, that's on here. That now just kind of goes onto, just go, 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 scatter, scatter, scatter that onto here. I'm gonna give Claire lots of this because I know she likes her cheese. So we're just gonna scatter a good healthy amount of Gruyere on top of the bread. I'm gonna give myself like a tiny bit, but like nowhere near as much. Now. I've run into a slight problem, which is the recipe calls for this to now be put under the grill so the cheese gets bubbly and like brown, but the oven is preheating and I've only got like one compartment in my oven, it's just that. So I've come up with a genius alternative solution, which is all I need, all, all a grill is, is directional heat. And you know what else produces directional heat? A hairdryer produces directional heat. So what we're going to do is we're going to melt the cheese with the hairdryer 
And that is going to be... It's Okay, it's, it's, um, it's kind of flying off a bit. I just need to slightly melt the cheese. Let's get right in there. Drama shot. Drop and drag on. Hang on. Drama shot with the thing. No, no. Zoom in. Zoom in. Zoom in on the cheese. Let's get right in on the cheese here. I think that's actually starting to melt a bit. I think this cheese has got a higher kind of melting point than I was anticipating. Or maybe I should have used like a different cheese. I didn't check that ahead of time. Uh, that, okay, that's going to have to do. Which is exactly why Ron and Hermione should have never ended up together. She... What? 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 Oh, wait, where are we going? We're doing a cooking show now. We're doing a what now? So, Ms. Russo. I present to you, today, your starter, French onion soup. Thank you. French onion and garlic soup, to be precise, with mm -hmm. toasted bread topped with a cheese that may or may not be Gruyere. Gruyere? Yes, that's what it said on the package. Yes, well, it said it said a combination of letters, I didn't know. So, I've got some, and you've got some. Yay. All right. Let's see how this is. So, I really like onions. It's very sweet. Is it supposed to be this sweet? Yeah. Okay, that's good. It's, a, it's actually really good. Is it? Yeah. You sure? Mm -hmm. I did prepare this with a hairdryer. I did hear that. Excellent. Okay, so I'd say a pretty damn successful starter there. And also that my timings are bloody perfect because I've got 66% battery left on my camera and I've done one out of the three courses. Marvellous. Now, you may recall this lovely kind of Yorkshire pudding batter that we made earlier. That's now been standing for an hour exactly as requested. And I've got a new pan out too. Because the first thing I've got to do is I've got to fry up these sausages. Not like 100% because they're going to go in the oven anyway. But they need to be like a little bit fried. They can't be raw when they get put into this thing. Also, that was just my hand there. That was just demonstrative. Um, so, let's get some heat going on here. Right, there's some fire going on under that. There you see, man-made fire, in fact. So we do that. Add just the tiniest drop of virgin olive oil, just because I like doing it. I'm not sure if it makes a difference. Just, you know, seems a bit fancy to do it that way. And toss in some lovely sausages. Perfect. Should just be able to fit this. Yeah, I know I've got to look like a weird walking. This is actually a really good pan. Claire picked it out, actually. So, yeah, it spreads the heat really, really evenly. Just shove those in there and just fry them for a bit. I don't know exactly how long. Hang on. It doesn't say. It just says lightly fry. So, I'll give them maybe ten minutes. We've got more to get on with while they're doing that anyway. So, don't worry about that. Except, of course, Claire is French. So, I'm going to add some garlic. Just lightly turn these bad boys as they go along. They're coming along very, very nicely. If anything, I might ever so slightly lower the heat. They're on quite a high temperature at the minute. Perfect. So let's just quietly let them get on with that. Now to actually make the Yorkshire puddings, and I'm sorry, I can't really stop the sausages making noise. It's kind of what they do. We're going to need this thing. This is like a muffin tray. I think we didn't, I really would have thought we didn't have one of these, but we do. Claire just has one. Um, the recipe called for me to use oil to generously, like, coat it. I didn't say what sort of oil, so I don't know. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to use butter. There's probably, like, a more sophisticated way than what I'm planning to do. But, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to, like, get a block of butter in my hand. I'm just going to rub it around here until there's butter, like, everywhere. And it's going to be butter central. You could say it's going to be butterly covered. After all, I do say it's butter safe than sorry. Now, for all of you going down to the comments to complain about the puns, why don't you just all butter out? Okay, that there is a buttload of butter here in this tray. Sorted. So, while my sausages are just finishing up there, this tray now needs to go on a bit of a journey. Grab the tray. The tray is now going to go down here in the oven for three minutes. That's just to make sure the tray itself is nice and hot. I don't know why, the, the, the recipe just says that's what it's going to do. Okay, tray's almost ready to come out of the oven, and in the meantime, I'm going to cut all of these sausages in half. So there's 12. Okay, I made a slight mistake with the recipe. The half sausage was supposed to go in, like, first, and then this was supposed to go into the oven. So that's fine. I'm just going to put the half sausage in now, then it's just going to go in for another, like, couple of minutes or something. It's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. So the sausages are out, and that means they now need to be filled up two-thirds with this stuff, which you know wasn't a bowl, but I've transferred it into a glass so it's easier to pour. So what I need to do is just pour, like, two. that was over two-thirds. 
That's more like two thirds. That one's going to be better. Okay, I kind of ran out of space for one. So it's only going to be 11. So that's fine. 11 is plenty. So there's our lovely little Yorkshire puddings actually starting to rise. They will just take a little bit of time. A bit worried about that one at the back, by the way. I suspect that one at the back might actually end up going slightly... You're going to be able to focus on that. I'm not sure you can properly focus on that. Uh, because, yeah, there's a door in the way. Uh, yeah, I'm slightly worried that these are going to slightly bubble over and kind of form one single mega Yorkshire pudding. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, mind. Also, we have the first casualty to, um, to go into on this occasion, which is some of you, when you saw me cutting the sausages, may have immediately panicked and started saying, no, John, no. This is Claire's pan, like her really, really nice one. And what we've just done to it is we've put, if we can just focus on those, we've put some massive gashes into Claire's really nice, kind of like, you know, the heat, the heat is nicely balanced pan. So I've just gone and admitted that to her and I'm going to go and buy her a new one on Monday because that's it's quite impressive actually. How bad is this by the way? I mean like this pan is like a month old or something. Yeah, this is, is actually, it? yeah, this is not only Claire's best thing, this is actually also brand new. Well also like you are an actual grown ass adult. Yeah. Like how do you not understand that you cannot slice with a sharp knife? I'm assuming you use one of the good knives yeah, to I do Yeah, I use one of the good knives to do that, yes. The good knives are good. Have I also ruined the good knife? No, no Okay, that good. Be the fun. knives are fine, don't worry. And there we go, out of the oven. Let's just zoom in on these bad boys. I think they look pretty damn good, if I do say so myself. So this here is indeed Toad in the Yorkshire Pudding. Little sausages baked inside Yorkshire puddings. Now, I just have to let these sit for a minute because they are supposed to be not eaten like baking hot, they're supposed to be like eaten like after they've cooled for a moment. So we can't have them just yet, but uh, yes, very, very soon. I'm rather looking forward to these. I tell you what, slap a hipster filter on this, we're ready to take over Instagram. And that, I would say, looks pretty damn fine. Let's serve this up to Claire and see if it actually tastes good, but it's a blend of sausage and pastry. I honestly don't know how far wrong this can have gone. Claire. Yes. The main course shall be, as I whip off the covering, <gasps> this is Yorkshire Pudding in the Hole, or Toad in the Yorkshire Pudding. I haven't decided what to call it yet. This is little, hang on, I'm going to put that somewhere where the audience can see it. That is Yorkshire Puddings with baked in sausages. Yes. Toad in the Hole. But kind of with that. So let's, let's just grab one of these. Yay. These actually, I'm pretty pleased with how these have turned out. They're supposed yeah. to be like eaten like warm, not hot. So they should be good to eat right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. That is really good. Have with these? Yeah, I mean, you know, they normally kind of go with gravy, but you know. Get out. <laughs> so, a fairly successful main course, I'd say two. In fact, this is going almost suspiciously well. Like, people, people mock me for these videos. But I tell you what, the cake in the first year wasn't that bad. The baked Alaska last year actually tasted pretty good. And this is all going fine so far. My methods may be unorthodox, but broadly, it all works. Now, uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to make the dessert. And that means we've moved over to... I'm running out of flipping pans here. I've gone off to one of the old scrappy pans. But uh, yes, we now need to uh, melt a bit of stuff in this pan. We got some peanut butter here. Hang on. Yeah, there are folks on the peanut butter. I need to melt like 175 grams. There's 240, so pretty much half the tub. I'm just going to spoon out half the tub. Okay, I've got a small problem. I need a total of 200 grams of uh, dark chocolate. I've got this, and I didn't really bother to check, which I should have done in the shop. Um, this is 125 grams total. So I need 150 grams right now and another 50 grams later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to find something to, to supplement this with. Aha! Aha! This could work. So we just toss in 100 grams of this stuff. Yeah. And then I just supplement that. Oh, bloody hell. Um, got chocolate on my hands. Um, now I just need to supplement that with like 50 grams of Nutella. So this is not part of the recipe. I'm just improvising here. So that's, oh bloody hell, how much is 50 grams? Uh, if I just put like this, that in, and then like one more of the same, that is probably fine. This will be a fine addition. Meanwhile, this soft brown sugar, I've got 500, I've got 500 grams of this stuff. There was nothing in the shop that said soft brown sugar. 
So I feel like this is kind of like it felt fairly soft and sort of brownish. So like light brown, well, wait, what if that light is in like light as opposed to heavy rather than light as opposed to... Never mind, we want about like half of this. So this just goes in here as well. So I know that may just look a bit like a pile of basically chocolate and peanut butter and Nutella and sugar, but actually I have no way to end that sentence. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what it is. Let's start heating it and see what happens. There we are, this time I'm not causing a gas leak. Okay, this is the state of things. This is, I think this is broadly how it's supposed to look. I've mine slightly burnt. I may have slightly burnt it while I was kind of turned my back and I was cracking a few eggs ready for the next step. So hopefully it's ready for the next step because the sugar's all dissolved. But yes, it looks broadly like this. It smells really damn good though, aside from the smoke. The smoke is slightly overpowering. I've opened a window. Hopefully I'm not gonna set the fire off. That's in the hall, not in the kitchen. So I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, so the next thing I need to do, I believe, is um, eggs. We've got some eggs to add in. Yeah, that's right. We're beating in eggs one by one. So I'm just going to put in like one, one egg. There we are. That's an egg. So we don't just put it in. There's one egg. And now we just mix all that in with the uh, the temperature is supposed to be like... The heat's supposed to... Well, the heat is off, actually. I've turned the heat off, which is what it says. It says turn the heat off. I'm kind of hoping the heat's not already too high and we're not going to end up with like scrambled eggs in this thing. That would probably be bad. But yeah, the consistency's immediately gone a little bit, ooh. Yeah, the thing, this could be quite nice, assuming I don't mess it up. But even if I do, two out of three is not bad. Slightly. So, final egg, together with 100 grams of flour, that was three eggs total. We just put in a whole bunch, of, it doesn't say like sieve it in, just says shove it in. So all right, let's get some flour in here too. Oh, okay. We lost a bit of the flour, but I added in a bit more to supplement, and this feels like the rest of it's like, you know, this feels like it's a, a good consistency. For, for baking going on here. Um, did I mention, by the way, we're making peanut butter brownies? That's what we're doing. This is the American dessert, peanut butter brownies. It feels like more American than just like normal brownies. So what I've got over here, hang about. This is a baking tray with like baking parchment or something. So I've kind of done that. It's, it's just like a Pyrex. Mine's a Pyrex one, but Claire tells me there's no difference, so it's fine. So I'm just gonna shove this into that. Now the bit that's been completely burnt onto the bottom of the pan, I'm just gonna leave in the pan. I suspect that bit's not very good anymore. So let's just instead spread this out a little bit. Make sure it's nice and even around our little Pyrex dish. Then just get some like peanut butter or something in like a mug or whatever and shove that in the microwave. Just melt that. I don't know what it's gonna take. Probably like a minute or something. When I melted the chocolate, that was like a minute. So I'll just melt the peanut butter in there. That's going to be fine. And once we've melted the peanut butter, then we're ready for this to go in the oven. Okay, that's that, all ready and lovely and melted. So now I'm just supposed to like drizzle this, like as gently as, I imagine it's not gonna supposed to look like this, but screw it, it's fine. We just drizzle this, I'm like, you know, I imagine it's supposed to be like, you know, elegant swishy lines or whatever, but this is good. Just some melted peanut butter on top of the mixture. And just you get in there, there we are. It's like, it's like flipping abstract art, perfect. That'll do, that's spot on. And now this, let's move the camera back a bit, goes into the oven. The oven has been reduced in temperature to 180 degrees from 200. Remember kids, always make sure your oven's at the right temperature. And this is now gonna go in for about 30 minutes. Godspeed, you magnificent bastard. Okay, half an hour later and this is the state of it. I think that looks... All right, the problem is it is fresh out of the oven. It's got like a little, it said like have a crust on it. It feels like it's got a crust on it, but it's definitely not ready to eat yet. It's definitely got to cool for the time being. But there's also one other thing we have to add on top, which is there were 50 grams of chocolate left over. Well, I think there was like 25 grams of chocolate left over from the chocolate bar I got because I got one that was too small. But that now gets melted in the microwave. So with that chocolate melted, now we just do a little bit more drizzling. This is like the final step, the nice, the dri I see. This is drizzling much more nicely than the flipping peanut butter did. And then, oh, aside from now, aside from that bit right there, this has actually got a proper drizzle to it, assuming the towel doesn't fall over. Don't fall over. And there we are, yeah, just a little more, little more, little more, little more, little more. Let's put little diagonal patterns on it. Oh yeah, this, this is the thing. This is Instagram right here. Now, some of you may be thinking, John, that looks fine, and a peanut butter brownie sure sounds delicious, albeit possibly not that particular one, because you've blatantly bloody burnt it, but that's not that American, surely. Well, that's okay. I'm going to make it more American during editing. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, and the dessert is going to be peanut butter and chocolate and possibly also kind of Nutella because we have to put some in brownies. Yes. Yes, look at this. They, they look they've nice. They've seen it. They've seen it, haven't they? they yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. Sort of, That's the first time they've seen it placed it up and put in a little kind of pyramid of, of unhealthy. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like brownies, but it's it, not. Well, it's more like, mm, more like, you know, chocolate cake. Yeah, that, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm not sure if that's, if a couple of things went wrong. I think you, you possibly, I think everyone and also our neighbours smelt the burning sugar. <laughs> yes, um, so possibly. the consistency may have gone a bit wrong. So that's like yes. chocolate and peanut butter melted on the top, and then there's yeah. like, oh. <laughs> it's falling apart. They're not quite, they're not quite one piece either, oh dear. Okay, oh well. slight, slight issues, go on, <laughs> dig in. What have we got? You can taste a slight burn, but okay. you know. Burn the Nutella? Does that come through at all? Mm, not really. I mean, oh, it's well. more like really chocolatey. That's okay, And you that's can good. taste the peanut butter on top. That's still good. That's still I'm not. Ch chocolatey with peanut butter on top still a really good result. I'm not complaining. I will eat them. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Claire, thank you for uh, joining us for this amazing experiment. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed having a three course meal cooked for you. Yes, absolutely. And before I forget, those of you who joined in the not too distant past, which is like a hundred thousand of you, um, this is Claire. She's here sometimes. Hi. She joins me on co-op videos. I'll probably link to some at the end of this video or something. There'll be some in the end. And God, and she has her own YouTube channel where she talks about books and stuff and books. Mostly books. Yeah. If you if you like books or something, I don't know, then maybe look at that too. I don't know. I'll put a link to it in the description. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we look upon the devastation that I have wrought upon the kitchen, and I contemplate spending a significant part of my evening actually cleaning this place up, thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to all of you, because I went back and checked um, on May the 27th, which is the actual third birthday, on May the 27th of 2015, we had um, 54,470 subscribers. Uh, so that means in the last 12 months, and that was like, you know, that was two years into the channel. Here we are three years in, and uh, we're up to, uh, it's about 191,000, coming up on 192 faster than I have any reasonable right to expect. So we've gained, um, we've gained 135,000 people in a year, which is a lot. Like, I know that doesn't sound like spectacular by the standards of like the biggest YouTubers you do hear about a lot, but like, by the standards of a channel our size, that's pretty rapid growth. So, yeah, thanks to all of you who came along and decided to take part in, in this utter, utter madness. If you missed the first and second year celebration, by the way, I will put up some uh, little kind of uh, annotations or whatever on screen right now so you can kind of go through and experience the joy of uh, me cooking previously. I've previously just done desserts. This is the first time I've done a full course meal. And I'd say we should call it success. Mostly. I'd say maybe like two and a half courses. Maybe two. The starter and the main were certainly good. The dessert maybe not, not so brilliant. Could have been a couple of issues there. But regardless, thank you all so very, very much for subscribing and sticking around and joining me on this very special celebration. And I will hopefully see all of you again, plus a great many more next year for yet more Cooking with John. And I don't know, maybe some other special occasion I'll do something. Too. I don't like to do these too often, I like them to be rare and special. So more cooking in future, I am sure, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been our third year anniversary special. Thank you all for everything. And goodbye. Ignore the demon we just summoned. It can't fit over the bridge. Okay, yeah. it can fit over the bridge. Oh, look at that. Your pantaloons are very, very nice. Okay, I've got a good idea. I'm going to summon a second demon to fight this one. Oh, look at the lightning! I got quite drunk last night and I don't know where my Death Star is.